spoke to Noam again on the Saturday, and I spoke a number of times to Gilad's grandfather, Tzvi, who was very involved as well. And it's just unbelievable how finally the family has the opportunity to settle down as a normal family and do the things that normal families do instead of demonstrating all the time and fighting all the time to try and get their son back. So um, Gilad seems to be uh, relatively okay as far as can be uh, determined at the moment. He's got some uh, shrapnel wounds that need to be treated. And he was malnourished and, you know, uh, was not exposed uh, to sun. However, we feel that with the love and affection of the family and the intensive treatment that he can get, so he, he's got a good chance to get better. Good news. Um, I know that Alex here, my, my guest, has a, a question for you, Hamda. Hamda, firstly, on behalf of the Zionist Federation and the Jews of this country, my native Australia, congratulations. We're all absolutely over the moon that Gilad is now back with his family. It's absolutely amazing. Um, what I would like to ask is, um, we all saw these very disturbing images as soon as Gilad was released when he was accosted by an Egyptian reporter. Um, has Gilad said anything about that, what his views are and perhaps what your views are on whether that was a legitimate thing to do and how he reacted to it? Okay. Uh, Gilad hasn't spoken about it. Uh, the family is trying to not to probe too much. Um, he hasn't spoken very much about his experience. Um, there's a little bit of a general knowledge of what happened to him, how the first few years were very harsh and then he got a bit better as the media exposure increased. Um, however, this interview was unplanned and all I can say that I'm really proud the, of the way he held himself. There was a young man who's been away for five and a half years, more or less buried alive, and what he spoke about was how he hoped that his release will bring peace uh, and understanding between diff different uh, nations in the in the neighborhood. And I think that uh, shows such a character uh, that they dropped it on him in such a way and, and he held himself so well. Mm. So uh, I came out feeling positive. Fantastic, the fantastic news. Hemda, please um, pass on our, our best wishes for Gilad from Revelation TV. And I know that I can speak for the majority of our viewers that we're absolutely delighted that he's come home. We believe that this is an answer to prayer. And uh, we will continue to stand with Gilad and his family. And we will continue to stand with Israel and the Jewish people. And so thank you for joining us thank today you, on the Middle East Report. May I just say thank you to you to the people who work with you, such as uh, Susan Fernandez, and the very many non-Jewish people who help us in this amazing campaign. And of course, uh, the Zionist Federation, who led a lot of the campaign in the Jewish community. Thank you very much. Hamda, it's a pleasure, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, you can tell, can't you, the, the joy in Hemda's voice after so many years that Gilad has come home. And uh, maybe this is something to actually show something about the power of families but also the power to actually go and do something it shows a love for his father of not giving up hope that his father would return home and did not stop campaigning yeah. until he saw his father come home in tremendous tenacity yeah. just a tremendous determination um, and I'm sure that uh, Gilad is going to be okay yeah it's, it's absolutely incredible we, we could not even begin to imagine what that young man suffered through for the last five and a half years. Um, and I'm sure he, his faith and his belief in, in his people and in God really would have helped him get through that. Um, and we can only imagine the absolute elation and joy that his family feel. Um, it's like he was born again, really. It's the redemption of a life, and I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And when, when we put that into the context of, of this prisoner exchange, which was obviously a very painful and difficult thing, but I think hearing the words of his relatives and in time I guess we'll, we'll hear perhaps from Gilad himself I think it makes it all worthwhile and prove that it was the right thing to do morally. 
Um, is there lessons Israel can win, uh, can learn from this? I mean, so for, on so many occasions, we've seen Israel completely demonized. But in this terms, they've won a PR battle against Hamas and against those forces of hatred and darkness that want to suppress and subdue the Jewish people. That here's a victory for life and, and, and how Israel treasures her soldiers. But also, does this not send another message to um, up-and-coming young men and women who are, who are 17, who are about to go into the IDF and to serve their time, two years for women, three years for men, that the Jewish state will do everything they can to protect and also if they get themselves into difficulty, to bring them home. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we discussed before, Israel, very much against its will, is a highly militarized state. It depends on its soldiers. And I think that the whole nation will be buoyed and every family which has someone in the IDF, and that's every family in Israel, mm. um, will take such heart from the knowledge that that bond between the state and the soldier is so strong and that no matter what happens, Firstly, the wishes and the prayers of, of Israelis and Jews all around the world are with them and also that the government will do whatever it needs to do, whatever painful steps are necessary, they will do that to redeem that life. And I think that's, that's a wonderful thing that's emerged from this. I mean, what, what's so amazing about this is uh, having read quite a few years ago uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's book called A Place Among the Nations, current Israeli Prime Minister. Um, he talks about there, which is really interesting, that how when the Jews started coming back to the land of Israel in the first wave of Ali, which was around 1882, that Jews instead became farmers and they became soldiers, instead of being uh, middle class and bankers. Um, and it was something about being a soldier and a farmer and being connected to the soil and to the land of Israel that they learned how to fight. And you had a new, a new almost Jewish warrior emerge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the settlers these days are so demonized, but the settlers are what created this modern state of Israel. And it's that settler, that pioneering spirit. And I think, as, as you point out, there is that very close connection between the land and the love of the land and that desire to fight for it and do what's necessary to preserve it. So it, it doesn't surprise me that they were the two sort of professions or occupations that the Jewish settlers um, you know, revolve towards. And I think it still is at the core um, of Israeli society today. I mean, the kibbutz movement may be on the decline to an extent, um, but I think that connection between the Jews and their land um, and the veneration of their soldiers and the need to defend its soil um, is stronger than ever. And I think that's one of the things that keeps Israel as vibrant and strong as it is. But how does Israel continue? I mean, we're looking now, oh, what, over 63 years since her establishment, almost a miracle in May 1948 faced three, as you said earlier in the interview, three wars of annihilation, plus also the Lebanon war, the uh, two intifadas, the last war against Israel was horrific, the uh, Palestinian intifada, we had the uh, war against Hamas and against Hezbollah, um, and the ideology of her neighbours and enemies is increasing to perpetuate that hatred and uh, conquest in Israel and yet she continues to flourish. And having been to Israel recently, you, you just see this whole nation alive and it's dynamic, um, new buildings, new architecture. Um, what is it in the Jewish spirit that enables Israel to achieve what it achieves? Well, I think all the things that you mentioned there, all the challenges that Israel faces are, are very, very true and they seem incredibly overwhelming. But the Jews are a tenacious people and ultimately they have no choice but to continue with their daily lives to try and lead productive good lives um, in support of the state and, and to see it flourish. Um, it's, it's an incredible challenge, it really is, but the Jews, despite everything that we've gone through, we are a hopeful, optimistic nation and there is that hope for peace and I think that's what drives Israel forward, that, that belief that despite everything we see and how motivated and determined our enemies are, we still feel that peace is an opportunity, that peace can be attained, no matter how unrealistic it may seem today. Um, so I think it's those two elements, that hope, the hope of, of a better future, and also just that, that Jewish pragmatism and that tenacity to get on with daily life, I think that's what sees the Israeli people through. But I, I would argue that Israel is already at peace because I've, I've never been to a society where its society is so cohesive. You can walk in the streets of Tel Aviv at two, three o'clock in the morning or Jerusalem and feel safe. Uh, you don't get the crime rate like you do here. You don't get the fear 
Um, and, and when you're over there and you see the, the conflict going on, you don't even notice it. Yeah, it, it is quite incredible. Um, I, I remember before the first time I came to Israel, um, you know, having seen the wars and the intifada, um, I, I was concerned what would it be like. But then when you walk the streets, you feel this incredible safety and security. And I think it is partly that, that connection with the land and that knowledge that at the end of the day, we've been through so much as a people and we can survive anything. And that's what, that's what keeps us going. I think we're down to the last three minutes of the interview, Alex. Um, have you got a message for our Christian viewers who have a love for Israel and the Jewish people and want to stand with you and also fight with you? I think that the support of the Christian people is absolutely paramount to the continued survival of Israel. Um, we count the Christians as our closest friends in, in this struggle, in this battle to, against the media prejudice and things that happen in the UN and on campus. And the Christian friends of Israel and Christians around the world are so integral and so important to the survival of Israel. Um, after all, we share common roots and common beliefs. We believe in that sanctity of life above all other things. And on behalf of the Zionist Federation, we are just so indebted and so grateful to your viewers and to your program, Simon, for the incredible support that they show to Israel. And it's not forgotten and it's not overlooked. I think it's important, though, because we have a duty. I mean, we have a fundamental duty to stand with Israel and the Jewish people, um, for giving us the Word of God, for giving us the Bible, for giving us the prophets uh, and the laws and the heritage, that we owe our heritage to the Jewish people. Um, and this is why I believe that this generation, my generation, um, has a duty to do what they can to protect Israel and the Jewish people because so many Christians failed during the Holocaust and during the reign of the Nazis to protect the Jewish people. And there were some very brave and incredible uh, Christians who protected, they hit, hid Jewish people even though it cost them their lives. And I think we're living in a time now where we're seeing our erosion of our Judean Christian heritage in the West um, and with that sends a warning signal and as we see the erosion of our values, we see the increase of anti-Semitism. And we know that when the Jews become targeted, it's the Christians who are next. I think that's very true. Um, as you said, we do have common values. And I think that in times like this, in times when anti-Semitism is, is resurgent once again, when Israel and the Jewish state is a threat, I think that it's very important that the Christians support us as they do. Alex, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today on the Middle East Report. It's been an absolute pleasure and uh, no doubt we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Simon. I just want to thank you all for watching today's Middle East Report. And, and it gives an insight into the Jewish values. It gives an insight into what it means to be an Israeli, to, to actually fight for the land of Israel against incredible odds. Let's not forget that uh, Israel is up against Hamas who are committed to genocide against Israel and the Jewish people, the same as Hezbollah, and also that Israel faces the threat of Iran, who have nuclear weapons and have vowed to destroy the Jewish people. But it's that Jewish hope in the Jewish God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob that shall be saved. So I want to thank you today for watching this edition of the Middle East Report.